All right, we're going to uh, be talking about bullets here, and I'm going to start this video in the background so I can kind of explain what's going on. When I was explaining bullets before about hollow points and lead balls, I kind of got into what happens when a bullet hits a target, and I talked about primary and secondary cavity. So this, this slow motion video here is going to show what happens when a bullet hits. Now the, this is going through steel plates, so these are some pretty high velocity rounds, but you notice it makes a clean hole. You see what's coming out of the backside a little bit? It, 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 it changes its formation. So as this bullet hits, if you look closely, you're going to actually see as they get to some that aren't going through the steel, they actually liquefy and turn in and melt. It'll melt right here, and then it kind of solids back up. So the energy and friction is so much that it turns the lead into liquid, and then it turns back into solid. And that happens very quickly. So now, would bullets be doing this on humans? No, they go through humans. Uh, but if you're going through a car, see how this angle, how it shatters up? It redirects the force of the bullet. And this splatter that you're seeing is what I was trying to talk about when I said secondary cavity. This is what I was talking about when I was talking about a secondary cavity. That explosion you see, that bullet coming out of here, that all that shrapnel is your secondary cavity. Your primary cavity is the one, just the bullet itself. So as these bullets go in here and kind of liquefy and go through these things, now the long bullets that you're seeing are rifle bullets. So they're going with much more velocity and they got more. See that secondary cavity there? This is a pistol bullet. It could be a rifle. And it looks like they're shooting um, a shotgun shell across from it. So these are bullets ricocheting off each other. Uh, you can tell it dents the bullet. Now remember, these things are both traveling fast. Uh, when, when I was a cop, we'd be at car accidents sometime and the cars would actually, pieces would weld together if they hit really quick or if they hit a metal guardrail and a, and a car hit it was at 100 or something, you would see this kind of like fusion and burns. You'd be like, wow, that's amazing. But when you transfer that much force that quickly, it heats up. And that energy has to, I'm not sure what it, this is. Wish I'd have skipped that. Um, I want to get to uh, the bullets. All right, so here's this bullet. I think they're going to get in a windshield here in a minute. Okay, you see how kind of redirected the, the splash down? This looks like it's going through some sort of material. That's a pistol bullet. Notice the spinning of this bullet. Those are called rifling and inside uh, a barrel it makes those little grooves and that's how you do bullet identification when people find bullets. You see these bullets are melting, you're not getting bullet identification. This right there, those marks, those grooves on the bullet, those are kind of destroyed in here because it's kind of melted them off. But when you're hitting windshield or wood or humans, those marks on the bullet stay there, and that's how you can identify bullets on what gun, and you can match it up to which barrel fired it. When you use something like this, and these bullets are kind of disintegrating, they're melting, they're making a hole, you notice the force of that bullet is still going through, that's pushing, that's a heavier bullet. A lighter bullet wouldn't do that, it would stop in between, it would stop before it got through. These are heavy bullets being pushed with a lot of speed and velocity in order to get through this. So, when, when you think about bullets, whether it's weight or speed, th this is the, the, w what you're thinking of when you design a bullet. In a minute it's going to show uh, how a bullet kind of rolls back and goes into that mushroom. And um, when it does that, hopefully it'll be here quickly. I don't know where it's at, so I can't really skip ahead. Okay, so this bullet's kind of going straight through. You notice that one didn't disintegrate. This is, this is paper, made a nice cut. It's going to show the back side of the paper. It kind of disintegrates the paper. So, because it's right, but you see those grooves, you see how the bullet's spinning ever so slightly? That's the rifling of the bullet that's causing that spin. That keeps the bullet level. This is like a pellet. It could be a, a shotgun slug, but I, I'm thinking it's pellet. Safety glass, it shatters, but you're still seeing that secondary, see that secondary cavity, all that displacement? This ricocheted off, it didn't go through. I've seen 9 mils, M16s, 223s do that off a windshield. They will not penetrate because of the angle. If you hit it straight on like this bullet, it'll shatter. See how that one kind of was at an angle? It kind of ricocheted off. The, the safety glass stopped it. See that mushrooming right there? If I can stop that. If I get another mushroom, I want to stop that. You can actually see the bullet expanding. This bullet was called was tumbling. See it's tumbling? So it didn't hit it straight. That's going to make a nice, nasty wound. 
Um, darn, I really want to get that mushroom effect. I thought there was another one. The bullet opens up and becomes wider. This is ballistic gel, basically, and this is how they show when you're shooting ballistic gel how a bullet expands, what the secondary cavity is. This bullet's coming out with a lot of force. It's pushing a lot of things through there. So it stayed solid and it's pushing with a lot of force. Um, same thing, uh, a, a lot of force going through here. Got a little bit of a mushroom there. Okay, you see how that bullet is getting bigger, how's it going? It's spinning and rotating because it came out of the barrel with the rifling, but you notice the sides are peeling back. That's what hollow points do. So instead of making just this rear part hole, it's making a bigger hole. It's also slowing down and losing velocity. And we talked about you want speed and velocity to drill through. Now this is just hitting straight gel. Had this bullet been hitting the bone on the interior, you would have a lot different effects. You would have bone shatter, you would have ricochets, you would have all kind of different effects. See that bullet spinning out there? See how much bigger it is when it came out than it was when it came in? Again, this is a pistol bullet really mushrooming out. Very mushroom. It's getting a much larger. Notice a secondary cavity is it's displacing, that's going to close back down. This is your primary cavity, what is actually pushing out of the way. There's that mushroom. That's what a bullet looks like a lot of times when you pull it out of some sort of flesh, if you shoot a, a side of beef or if you shoot something that, that simulates human body tissue, that's what the bullet does. And that's what we call the mushrooming effect. It looks like a mushroom. Hollow point does that much better than ball. So, <laughs> I just wanted to give some different, uh, I'll, I'll try to put a link in the uh, description on how to get to this video. Pretty interesting video. Um, this is, again, for education purposes. I'm not claiming any uh, copyright on that video. This guy right here did a pretty, uh, a pretty neat little thing. He, he took a primer. Um, this is just a primer of a shotgun shell. So he took this primer and he put it in an old flare gun just to see what a primer did underwater to show the explosive force uh, when you get something underwater and then he blew it up and as he blew it up he does it fast and then later on he does it slow to show exactly how it goes and he slows down the frames to give you an idea on what happens and he slowed these down quite a bit. Watch the finger release, watch the bolt go forward you'll see the primer explode it does it. He slows it down even more later on Watch the finger, here he goes, he let it go, it's coming, there goes the light, ex light explosion, it's exploding frame by frame, it, 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 and, and that's just a primer. Now when you fire a gun in water, you get much more force and a lot more distance, etc. This is just the primer of a bullet. This is what happens inside the shotgun shell, but when you enclose it in water, when you encapsulate all that force in a liquid base like a human body, it does, more, it does more damage. It looks much more menacing than just a little bitty primer. And then uh, <laughs> on this one, this is a guy actually shot a gun underwater. Uh, you're going to see this pistol. He pulls it. You're going to see the explosion. Then he slows down. Here comes the hammer. It just hit the primer. The bullet just exploded. It's expanding. There goes your bullet. And that's what happens underwater. That shows a good... Now, what you, what you didn't see here, and I don't know if he does this again, he'll do it again on a different one if he doesn't do that one. This guy's pretty good. He gets some good scientific stuff. Um, I think he does something about the something's tail. But uh, it's a glass tail. I'll try to put a description or, or talk about it in the description when I finally write this out. But uh, So now he does an automatic. Um, he's going to fire it underwater. Then he'll slow it down. Obviously it broke the glass. And now I think he gives it a slow motion. So I'm going to try and stop this here. There goes the hammer. Some, he's just squeezed the trigger. The hammer comes up. The hammer hits the firing pin. The firing pin travels, hits the primer of the bullet. The primer of the bullet explodes. The bullet expands, or the, the, the gunpowder inside the casing expands, forcing the bullet down the barrel. See a little air bubble? You see the expansion of the gases coming out of that thing. You see a little bit of gas escaping here. 
I want to go back. You see a lot more gas coming out. The bullet shoots out, but you still have all this expanding gas. That's a lot of your noise that you're going to hear. If you had a, a silencer on a gun, it would muffle all that, which would create a silencing effect. You notice this slide is coming back. It's going to eject the round. There comes the round out. If he's got a magazine, another round's going to go in. Because it didn't eject a round, that's what we'd call a stovepipe, where the bullet actually gets caught in, in the uh, gun and it stops it from um, functioning properly. So let me, uh, let me go back to his uh, revolver here, because I want to show you what happens when people hold a revolver wrong. There is gases that escape from here, and you'll hear stories of a guy getting their fingers blown off on a high-powered gun because they'll put their thumb here. So when you're holding a pistol, if you're holding on a pistol grip like you should, there should be no fingers or everything up here. The only finger is going to be the trigger finger, and that's going to pull backwards. But this is called a gap where the cylinder and the barrel reaches because each one of these have a bullet in it, and you always get some escaping gas here. And on a high-powered gun... I'm going to try and stop it if I can. There you go. On a high-powered gun, this little gap right here, you see the bullet coming. That's pressure coming out of there, and that's fire and flame, depending on the type of bullet. A 357 puts a lot of bullet. I think a, a 9 millimeter, millimeter puts like, I don't know, 10,000 pounds of pressure or whatever, and a, and a 357 is like 40,000. So there's a lot of pressure, and if your finger is right here, when that gas comes out, that's when you have people burn their hand and say, that gun almost blew my finger off. It didn't almost blow your finger off. You had your fingers way up far. The, only, the farthest finger ought to be here is by the trigger, and there ain't nothing going to hit your trigger. The rest of your grip should be back on here. So I wanted to show that. Uh, again, this is just gases coming out. That's gases coming out. And then I have one other one that shows a nice slow motion of a, of a semi-automatic going off. So he's going to squeeze it. The hammer's going to go up. It's going to go back, it kicks out the round, it loads another round. He's got his thumbs on both sides here. You notice both of his sons are laying down. They're not crossed over. You notice nothing's in the back. He's high on the back strap, so the slide has a place to go in the rear. He's going to squeeze another round off. Slide's going to come back. Watch that hammer drop. When a hammer drops, it fires the bullet. Then the slide comes back, kicks the round out, loads another round, and he's ready to shoot. And that's the basic operation of a semi-automatic. So anyway, I um, wanted to, to just discuss all the, the different ways of bullets and, and again, I, I really want you, a lot of people don't focus on understanding how a gun works and what happens when I pull the trigger and how the bullet gets down range. All they want to know is I squeeze the trigger and I get a hole in the target. And, and that's okay. But it's good to understand the whole concept of how it's going because then you can troubleshoot when you have problems. Kind of what's going on. If you squeeze this trigger and this only goes back halfway and the round doesn't come out, you've got some issues. Could be a bad seated magazine, could be a double feed in the ammo, could be your hands in a way, could be he's rubbing his thumbs on a slide which is slowing down the action. You could have a weak spring and it's not pushing a spring back far enough and forward to load another But But, but if you understand how a gun works, you, you kind of understand it becomes second nature and you don't have to think about it. It becomes instinctual if you do it 5,000 times. Then it becomes muscle memory. And you don't have to think about all these things. But when you're learning, it's good to have a good foundation about how a handgun works, how the explosion process works, how the bullet, how everything is contained in this barrel and slide of a gun. And all that pressure basically pushes the bullet down range towards your target. Okay, we'll end that there on, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to call this, operation of bullets and guns or something. All right, buddy, Miss T, you're good boys.